It's just a fancy formula. I'm not going to go over it because you have it in your thing. So we're going to jump to when you should be eating. Now let me tell you, there's different times that you should be eating. You should be at least eating five to six times a day, four to six times a day. I know that sounds crazy, but I'm not talking about full-fledged, you know, three squares or six squares. I'm talking about, you know, six smaller, well-planned out meals that you kind of think about on Sunday and you plan out for the week. And it's pretty easy to do because then you store a lot of it at work. Um, you store it in your freezer. You store it in your refrigerator. But if you really want to get a handle on you and your athlete's nutrition and their fueling, you got to have them start thinking that way. It's too easy to get the cognitive brain dictating what you eat. If you wait until impulse eating, when you're hungry after a workout or not having eaten in a while, and your, your, your athletes are just going from school to practice and mom's stopping off at the local you know, bagel shop, then you're not going to get the best performance, right? You don't want to be eating bagel before you exercise. It's probably one of the worst things you can do. So you want to make sure that when you first wake up, you're eating some protein. Why? Because when you first wake up, you have protein degradation. Your body's actually starting to break down its protein. Anytime you get past four to six hours of not eating, which happens when you go to sleep, your body begins to break down some of its protein. I threw a couple of slides in there, so if you're looking for them, they might not be there. A little update here. So sorry about that. Um, but this is important. So if you have early morning practices, which I know all of you do, or races, you've got to have at least some protein. You need to turn that mechanism off. You do not want to exercise having not eaten. Now people say, oh, I want to burn the calorie and keep myself in lipolysis or fat you know, burning. Well, it's not going to do it. You're, you're, you're going to still be breaking down your muscle, and that's unhealthy. So yes, you're going to be increasing your fat utilization, but you haven't shut down your muscle utilization. So if you're exercising in the morning before you've eaten something, you're going to be in a net protein balance. That's not good. Yes, you're going to be burning fat, but you're going to be burning your protein, your muscle mass, which you, your body needs to keep its metabolism up. So you never wake up and not eat something. My recommendation is to have a piece of fruit, perhaps, or a, a piece of uh, light, small, uh, whole grain bread or a rice cake with some protein. You've got to get some protein, whether it be whey protein, whether it be um, cottage cheese, whether it be um, the, the Greek yogurt, which is fantastic for protein. It's better than the normal yogurt. Um, peanut butter, a handful of nuts. You've got to have something. It's got to have protein. So you've got to eat first thing in the morning. You've got to shut down that process. You've got to bring it to a halt. So before you do anything in the morning, you've got to take in some protein. It doesn't need to be a lot, just enough, maybe 100 calories worth. 200 calories if you're bigger, exerting more. But you've got to have something. The most important message you can give your athletes, and yourself. So again, I'm not just talking to your athletes here, I'm talking to you as well. So <clears throat> when you wake up and eat in the morning, your protein synthesis begins to go up, higher than the protein degradation. So you end up being in a, in a net protein synthesis, and that's favorable. After exercise, without eating, you have an increase in protein synthesis, but you've also increased your protein degradation. So if you've woken up and you've exercised, yes, you've increased your protein synthesis, but you've also increased your protein degradation. And as a result of both of those things going up, you're still ending up in a net protein degradation. And that's really important to understand. Because exercise is actually protein synthesis producing. So when you exercise, you actually increase your protein synthesis. So you have to benefit from that and maximize it by making sure that you're eating some protein. So if you exercise and then eat, you're going to increase your protein synthesis. And that's really kind of the essence of what we're, we know to be true scientifically and rules that you have to live by. It doesn't matter who you are. Now, I'm a yoga guy. I teach yoga. And it's very well known that in yoga, proper practice, it's not favorable to have food in your stomach. Well, it's not any time to exercise, <clears throat> but particularly when you're doing yoga. Because you want to make sure that that blood is circulating through your brain and your body and your muscles. It's not spending time in your stomach. It's reaching out to the rest of your body. And so there is something very you know, um, body harmonizing to yoga. And so I sometimes make exceptions, particularly something like yoga, to make sure that you're not you know, having food in your stomach. So you're you know, maybe three to four hours removed from any food. And then you can actually hold off and withhold from food for maybe a half hour after you do it, just to let your body sit with it a little bit. So I have to be true to what I do. And um, because I so fervently, um, passionately believe in yoga, 
I, I do say that that's okay. And so yoga in the morning on an empty stomach, or maybe a little bit of protein, and then holding off for that half hour after you're finished is perfectly acceptable to allow the true um, benefit from it. And there's some truth to that. So <clears throat> we know that food intake impacts body fat more than exercise. So we all talk about, hey, my, <clears throat> my athletes, I want to maximize their body weight, especially if it's a lightweight boat. You want to have the most powerful engine you can. And the most powerful engine that you can have, and particularly a lightweight boat, is one that has the greatest percentage of muscle mass. So you want to make sure that they're oxidizing their body fat, they're laying down new muscles. So you're following the eating recommendations that I just gave you, and you're making sure that they're burning that body fat. Well, food intake will suppress that fat oxidation. So if you've eaten in close proximity to exercise, there's little fat oxidation. So you want to make sure that those athletes are eating that three to four hour time period before they exercise, before they do their bout of exercise, and then they're staying really well hydrated, making sure that they're staying hydrated so that they can sustain the level of output that you want. We like to think that exercise of high to moderate intensity is a powerful stimulus to burn fat, but ultimately through the research, and again, this is research that comes out, seems like routinely, the most recent is by Melanson, showing that, listen, low intensity exercise will burn fat, but you can completely shut that down and actually reverse any of the fat that you've just burned through exercise just by eating and, and what you've eaten. So, uh, again, food is without question the most powerful stimulus. We have to keep that in mind. So here it is. Here's the bottom line messages that I want to get across today for you. Um, this is Dr. Paul's protocol, My Healthy Eating 101. It's six small meals per day, which I'm sure most of you are doing every two to three hours, consuming protein at each of these meals, especially in the morning, smaller meals as the day goes on, and consuming mostly unprocessed, unrefined whole grains, fruits and vegetables, 25% uh, protein, 50% carbohydrate, and 25% fat. Okay, and I, I believe I included that within my packet. You all have that on the packet? Yeah. Great. 